Hello everybody, my name is Mohit Deshpande, and uh, in this video, uh, the kind of chart that I want to cover is uh, called a bar chart. And so uh, what we'll be doing is uh, I'll show you how we can uh, use matplotlib, is the library that we're going to be using, and uh, we can plot a bar chart. And the bar chart is just going to have, um, well, we'll do it first with one, uh, one series of data, and then we'll do it with like two series, uh, two series of data, and so we I'll show you how we can get that, and then a ton of um, uh, a ton of other stuff that we can do with, with bar charts. So, now first of all, you'll notice that I have a ton of imports here, and just ignore them for a second because we're we're going to get to them, um, at some point we're going to use all of these, but I just ignore that for a second. Probably one of the more important things is plot dot show is. It it shows the actual uh, it it'll show the the graph. But what is plot? That's this matplotlib dot pyplot, and that's what the um that's the kind of plot all the all the plotting that we're going to do is going to be using this um, using functions on this plot. Uh, so that's that's kind of how matplotlib uh, works. But to actually discuss a bar chart. Um, so, so what kind of data is, is, is a bar chart good to, good to show? Well, we can use bar charts to show something like, we can, we can use bar charts to show categorical data. And what I mean by that is, you know, suppose that we wanted to, uh, you know, we suppose that we wanted to know how many people, uh, have, A's and B's and C's and D's and F's in some class room or something. So what we can do is we can make a bar chart so that uh, all of the you know all of the, uh, on the on the x-axis of the bar chart would be what grade they have, and then on the y-axis is how many people received uh, that grade, and then we can actually split it up because maybe um, for in the particular class. We could split it up by people who had one professor, or people who had another professor, or we could split it up, you know, in, in, in many different ways. But that's just kind of an, an example of what we could use for for um, for bar charts is when you have discrete data that you want to uh, discrete data that you want to plot, like counts or something similar. So uh, first thing that we'll do is we need a number of bins, and what I mean by bins is how many actual uh, how many ticks on the x-axis do we do we have? We have five, right? A, B, C, D, and F. Uh, then we can actually create our data. And for this, I'm actually going to use uh, NumPy. NumPy has some pretty great functions. So NumPy dot random has some great functions. So I can call rand int. I pass in the low, the minimum value, and the maximum value. So let's do like zero to one hundred. And then I pass in, you know, what kind of data that I, well, what kind or how many of those points that I want to generate. In this case I want to generate one for one per bin. And so what's going to happen is at each A, B, C, D, and F we're going to have a number for that and that's going to be bar one. I'm going to create a bar two a bit later. But after I have this I actually need these these indices. And, and the indices are what matplotlib will use to kind of organize. So it'll say that the first index is going to get the um, value at bar one for the second index, we'll get the uh, value uh, bar one, and then you know, and this is good because it it works for multiple um, when we have bar charts that have multiple bars, or that have diff multiple series, I should say. So a quick way to do that is np dot a range, not a range, but a range, and then you say number of bins, and that will get you all the indices. And then here comes the magic: you actually plot it. So plot dot bar, and then we pass in the indices, and then we pass in our data, which is just bar one. And there's some other options that we can um, we can use, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave those blank for now. And so this is like the bare you know this is the bare minimum that we need, and I can just kind of plot this, and we can see uh, what happens. Okay, so here is my bar chart, and so it just generates some random numbers from zero to hundred, and then here's what the bar chart uh, actually looks like. These bars are really thick. Though, so um, I'm gonna have I'm actually gonna thin them out, so I can exit out of this. And I'm gonna create another parameter here uh, called bar width. We'll set to like 0 
and we can actually make these bars a bit skinnier. And we'll need to do that uh, when we are, that's another parameter that goes here. Well, we'll need to do that when we go to um, have multiple bars in just a second here. But I can rerun this, and then now my bars are uh, skinnier. So this works out well. But wait a minute. The values that are shown here aren't actually A, B, C, D, uh, or F. So we can change that. Very simple. We say, whoops, we say plot dot x ticks, and then we show the indices that we want. Indices, and then we just give it a tuple of the values that we want. And then since we have five, we can just say A, B, C, D, and F. And so now that should show the uh, x ticks, or that should actually label them instead of give them like numerical values at the bottom. And there we go. So now you see that instead of these numerical values at the bottom, we actually have A, B, C, D, and F. Okay, great. But how well does this scale for if we have multiple series? And what I mean by multiple series is that when we run this, there were just basically bars of one color. So what if we wanted to have another bar because maybe we're like splitting it up by um uh, maybe we want to split up by like instructor or something like that. Maybe you take the same course with a different instructor, and maybe one instructor um, students tend to do better than another instructor students or something like that. And so we can do that also very easily. In fact, I'm just going to copy this here, and I'll make bar two, and it's just the same as bar one, except now I'm actually have to I have to put it in the uh, in the bar chart, and that's going to be a bit more complicated. Uh, what basically what we can do here is say plot dot bar, and then instead of indices, I have to do indices plus bar width. And what that does is that like shifts because if we just had indices, then it, what's going to happen is bar two is going to be like overlaid on top of bar one, and we don't want that. And and we know what the width of bar one is; it's bar one width. So it's now what this will do is this will put the two, uh, put the two right next to each other, in in, in the in the bar chart. And then I can say bar 2, and then I also have to specify that this is bar width. And then for any plots that you'll, if you want to have three bars, for example, then it would, the next one would be uh, plot.bar indices plus two times bar width. And that would be, that would shift it over, your, your bar over three, and so that it's in the right position, so it's not like being overlaid by anything. But anyway, that's uh, basically how that works. And we can uh, run this and see what our result is. Okay, so now we have, you know, two bars like that. There's some cleanup stuff that we can do. For example, we can change the colors, because these bars are both the same color, and that's not really desirable. So we can change the colors very easily. In plot.bar, there's a labeled parameter called color, and then we can pass it a single letter a color. So, like, B is blue, uh, and then for this one, we'll do color equals G for green. And then also, I also want to label these bars, and so when I create a legend, I can actually give them uh, a label, and so I can say, like, this represents the scores of Professor 1. So I can say label equals, like, Professor 1 or something, and then here I can also say label equals uh, Professor 2, and then uh, I can actually do, do a, a legend, so plot.legend, and that'll automatically generate the legend just based off of these labels. So when I run this, I get this result. Notice I have my, you know, all the bars are colored now so that they're nice, and I have, you know, Professor 1 and Professor 2. And I'm going to do one quick thing uh, before we uh, before we move on, and that is I'm going to move these labels so that it's actually kind of in between these two. And that's also pretty simple, and I'm actually going to label my axes as well, because it's always important to label your axes and give it titles. So I can, uh, I can do the axes label real quick. So plot dot x label labels the x axis, so this will be like um, final grade, and then the y label function just labels so the y axis, so this will be score, or I should say um, I should more accurately, I should say so like frequency, which is how many students receive that score. And now if I want to shift over my uh, uh, my x ticks here, I want to shift these over. How much do I want to shift it over by? Well, it's I'm in the same predicament as when I want to do my second bar. I can just shift it over by bar width. So I can say copy, paste, and now what will happen is this will be positioned so that they're one bar width over, and so they're in between the two. 
See, so now I have my axes that are labeled uh, frequency and final grade. I have my professor's legend, and I have my X ticks are like nice and in between the two. So I'm going to stop right here. Uh, we can ask. We can also add a title, but I'll, I'll get to that later. So in this video, we uh, discuss quickly how we can make a bar chart, and, and I, um, I discuss some of the stuff that we can do specifically to uh, Matplotlib, and that is um, we call plot.bar pass in the uh, indices and the data, and so then it's going to take each uh, portion of the indices and plot it with the with the uh, the plot um, the corresponding to the coordinate here, and then we can get, also give it a bar width, and then we can give it a color and a label, and the labels for the legend that's showing up on the top right. We can also change the position of the legend if we wanted to, but anyway, if we wanted to have more than one bar, then we want to make sure that we shift the bars over by some bar width, so plus one times bar width, plus two times bar width, and so on. We can label our x and y axes using these functions, and with x ticks, we can position the uh, x labels, and so that we don't have numerical values, we have categories like a, b, c, d, or uh, f. And so that is how we can plot uh, bar charts in Matplotlib.